that we know now is not the world that was in my childhood, nor is it the world that shall be for our children's children. This is because we have entered into an undeniable extinction phase with catastrophic consequences for the current generation as well as the future. Think about it. The climate change crisis and the ecological degradation and disaster is such an imminent threat to humanity. There is good news and bad news to this reality. The bad news is humanity is part of the problem. In fact, humanity is the problem. And the good news is we are part of the solution and we are the solution. But how? I strongly believe that the solution lies in an intergenerational dialogue of the past, who we were, the present, who we are, and the future, what could be. I'm not a prophet of doom, neither am I a predictor of the future. Yet the current challenges that we see today, such as terrorist attacks, conflicts, the climate crisis, human rights abuse, are a reflection and a sign that the future might not be looking as good. However, the hope lies in our children. But in order for that future to be possible, we need to be deliberate in how we invest and train children for the future, for this is critical. I will give you the context. According to UNICEF, over 50% of children living in South Africa live below the poverty line without access to equitable and quality education outcomes. A recent Thrive by Five index report highlights that a staggering 55% of children that are undergoing early learning, learning are failing to thrive by five. And what this means is that by the time they get to become adolescents, they have been educated into or deprived of their creative capacities. This is what, according to Jean Piget, is that we are grooming children that are ready to learn what we already know. Yet, we should thrive to enable them and to capacitate them to have creative minds that are able to discover and explore the world of wonders and the world of possibilities. The responsibility to teach children lies with all of us. And what we have now learned through our work is that learning through play using uniquely curated exhibits presents children with opportunities to be creative and a opportunity of a lifetime to understand the world around them and get better and improve into the future. What you see here is the Constitution Hill Human Rights Precinct that is based in Johannesburg, South Africa. Within these walls are walls of fear and historic site of apartheid where blacks were incarcerated, including the cell that Nelson Mandela was kept in isolation. Every day, a dedicated and committed team from Play Africa transforms this historic site of fear and repression into a safe and inclusive space for children to experience their life, to learn through play, and be creative in who they are. Every day in this space is different, for it is tailor-made and curated to meet the special needs of children based on their needs and based on their abilities. In this space, children are free to be who they are in the wildest and safe sense possible. I am the executive lead at Play Africa, which is a children's museum um, in Southern Africa and a pioneering children's museum. The children's museum is unique exhibits, and these exhibits ignite a new way of thinking about teaching children and preparing them for the future. It disrupts 
the way of thinking about what a museum can be and what a museum can do in Africa through different models, different programs, to ensure that children are taken to appreciate the world around them. And it disrupts the world of children's museums in two models. The first one is that it is a children's museum without falls, meaning to say we meet children where they are. The second one is that its programs are informed by the image of the child as a curious, autonomous human being who is capable to make decisions and choices. Just to clarify, before I walk you through the magic of a museum without wars, a children's museum is not a school, and neither does it aim to replace a school. Rather, it occupies a powerful and complementary role to transform education through the involvement of children, educators, families, and the community as a whole to ensure that the child develop within the community to the best and optimally. And a children's museum is built on the understanding and the knowledge that learning through play transforms children because it is a unique teaching strategy and a learning tool for children to understand world complex concepts such as the um, energy crisis that we are experiencing. There is scientific evidence that proves that learning through play stimulates creativity as well as enable children to develop their capacities to collaborate, to communicate, to critically think, to be innovative, build resilience around mental wellness, as well as taking them through their career path. Now, the power of a children's museum without walls lies in its mobile exhibits that can be transported from one community to the next, traveling to where the children are and enabling them to experience and expose them to different kinds of exhibits and career paths in line with their community, in line with their aspirations, but at the same time exposing them to the power that lies in exhibits. Through exhibits, children from low resource communities tend to learn about world and complex concepts such as democracy, the rule of law, things such as their constitutional rights, as well as complex science subjects in an engaging way. For example, using the children's planetarium exhibits, children are introduced to complex space science in a playful, engaging may manner in a child-friendly way, using the local indigenous languages, using the local indigenous perspective, and using the local sky that is known to the local community. Exhibits ignite children's curiosity about complex science subjects and push them to desire to pursue such specialized science subjects such as paleoscientists. And the power of exhibits lies in then allowing children to assume the role of scientists and assume the role of being those scientists that are exploring dinosaur fossils. The influence of the exhibits transcends the child to impact the community to impact the villages and to impact the world around them. Building cohesion, building social inclusion, building empathy around their communities. I submit to you that we can only shape tomorrow today. And this can be done from an early stage from childhood. And I propose to you ladies and gentlemen, that the children's museum model is a paradigm shift in how we can transform 
the manner in which children look at sciences, how children look at climate change awareness, how children get to look and understand the crisis that we are into and the crisis that we have entered into. I thank you.